gorgeous welcome back to life and style today's video is going to be a tutorial or get ready with me however you want to look at it on this look right here which is a rainbow look for pride month so happy pride month to all within the community I had done a look like this probably about two years ago and just wanted to update it do something a little different even though of course I'm still using rainbow colors and I did um, do the look is completely different than what I did before even though probably used a lot of the same colors but I love the way this came out it just it's bright it's happy it's fun and right now with everything going on in the world I just I wanted to bring a little of that to you so without further ado let's go ahead and get started so we're starting zoomed in um, that way you can just see better what I'm doing and per usual I did um, one eye already not obviously to completion but enough so and the reason why I did that is because I'm putting down a white base this is just this right here is just um the essence I love stage eyeshadow base and the reason why I'm doing that just for the top is because I want to set that down with an eyeshadow that it's close that is close to my skin tone and so I also want to even out the skin tone as well but I need a primer to do that. But I'm not going to put this primer down on the main area of the eye or the like the main uh, lid space because I'm going to be using that white base and the white base is sticky. So I don't want to have powder and then put that on. It just wouldn't work out. The eyeshadow I'm using just to set that down is the Bella Cappuccino Bella, Bella Eyes from Milani. They don't sell these anymore, but I still keep it because... Um, it works very well for what I needed to and I usually use it just to set down my eyeshadow primer so as you can see I'm just kind of sticking to that part where I have the eyeshadow primer just to make sure it doesn't crease and I have it set down so the base that I'm using is the NYX eyeshadow base in white this also comes in black and different colors um, but basically the reason why I use this is to make sure that the colors that I'm putting on my eyes are going to pop and look better. They do tend to look different with, um, with a black base or a white base, so that's why I'm using it. So I'm just taking my ring finger and just taking some of that base and placing it right on the lid. And it's gonna get a little messy on the bottom, but that's okay. All we wanna do is have that base down so that the colors look more vibrant. And I'm not really going above my crease for this because I just want to make sure that I don't get into the primer and the powder that I put down earlier. So that's it. And like I said, you see it's messy down here. It's, it's a process. <laughs> when I was doing this, I was like, oh, trust me, it's a process. All right, so the main palette I'm going to be using is the Zulu by Juvia's Place. This is what it looks like here. As you can see, the colors are perfect for a rainbow look. Um, so that's why I chose it. It had most of what I needed there to complete this look. I just wanna clean this up because this is really driving me nuts. So what I am doing for the inner corners, I'm using the yellow shade here. And I'm just picking up, this is an eye crease brush from e.l.f. And as you can see, it's really, really thin. The reason why I wanna do that is because I am going on the inner corner of my eye. So I wanna keep that as specific as possible and just more streamlined. So what I'm doing is actually bringing in this yellow a little farther in than it needs to be because you're overlapping. You don't want them to just like cut out. You want them to actually overlap so they look like they're melting into each other. I'm just cleaning off the same brush and then I'm gonna get into my Sugar Pill Acid Berry um, Single Eyeshadow. I tend to use this one when I'm doing like my Joker inspired looks, but I wanted this to pop a little more than it was over there, so I popped the green on it and I liked the way that kind of brought that yellow a little more to life. So 
So once that's done, I'm going to go back into the Zulu palette and I'm going to pick up this orange shade right here. And I'm just picking up a flat, a flatter type brush again, because I want to place it onto the lid and not necessarily blend it right away. I need to tap it on there to get the placement right. But I am going above the natural crease. You guys know, if you've watched my videos, that I have very hooded eyes. So I have to make sure that the placement is always going to be above the natural crease or you're never going to see it when I close my eyes. And like I said, this is a process, as you can see, because it looks really crazy right now, but it will come together. And again, pushing it farther than what it's actually going to be because I'm going to melt the purple now into that. And I actually, I was a little extra with the purple and decided to use two instead of one. So I started with my Sugar Pill Poison Plum, which is another single shadow. And I just grabbed a um, E25, E25 from Sigma, which is a blending brush. It's just a smaller one, like a travel size one, but it has the same brush as the full size one. So it's not a big deal. So I'm basically just placing that over the orange and again just kind of stippling it onto the eyelid first. And so per usual just getting that placement down and then we'll go back in after and clean it up. And because I always use a like a makeup remover wipe or a eye makeup remover wipe to get everything down at the bottom and really sharpen up that line. I always tend to go over just to make sure that I have color down there so that when I clean it, I'm not way up here. So as you can see, I'm really patting that in dark because we're gonna obviously blend that out. You don't wanna leave that like that. And then I'm going to go back into the Zulu palette and pick up this pretty purple right here, which is so beautiful. And then this time I'm actually using a full size E25 from Sigma. I just didn't want to use the same one because they are different colors. And so I wanted to make sure that that variation and that depth that I put on there by using the two purples really shows up. And as you can see, this really deepens up the initial purple that I used from Sugar Pill. So what I'm doing here is just lightly blending in between the colors so that, again, it just looks like it's melted into each other. And then I will go in and start kind of blowing out all of that color. And we're gonna use more colors for the um, lower lash line to really make this a rainbow look. I had done one of these probably three years ago, maybe two or three years ago, which was much different than what I'm doing now. And I wanted to do something um, different so it wasn't the same thing, you know what I mean? I wanted to do kind of an updated and then just lightly, I want to make sure that this just doesn't look like a patch of color on the eye. So I'm just very lightly on the outer portions of it, just kind of softening that up. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to clean up under the eyes. And all I'm using is my simple eye makeup remover pads. These are really small, which I like. And you can use this all over the face, but because they're so small, I tend to use these for the eyes. And so then I'm going to basically go up and I'm cleaning all of that stuff off, but I am making that pointed there and really keeping that sharp and clean. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. And just up to keep it sharp and clean. So what I am going to do on this side that I've already done on this side is just to highlight the brow bone. 
I usually like to use just a stark white to highlight my brow bone, especially with something like this. As you can see, I let the white really show through. I usually don't do that, just a little bit, but I'm gonna be using my LA Colors Duo Tone and Eclipse, and again, basically just a black and a white, and I'm just dipping into this white with a brush that is kind of tapered in, as you can see there, kind of goes up to a point, just so that I can have more control in that area because I do want it right up top there to highlight that brow bone. So I am blending it out, but I'm still letting the white show enough so that it's not completely blended away and you can definitely see it with this look. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to do my winged liner off camera because it's easier to do it that way and then I'll come back and we'll keep going. So I've, I've zoomed you out a bit because now we're gonna work on the face and get all of that going and then we're going to finish off the bottom lash line with a bunch of other colors to really make this eye look pop. So um, like I said, I've already done my winged liner and for that I used my Maybelline Eye Studio Gel Liner in Black is Black, which is my favorite personally. It always comes through, it just, it always applies really beautifully. So for um, primer today, I'm gonna be using my Makeup Forever Mattifying Primer. It is getting very muggy up here in Connecticut now and we're having like nice weather as far as temperature goes for spring. We've been having some really warm days, but with some breeze and, and all that, it's been raining probably for the last, I don't know, three or four days. So we've got a lot of mugginess going on, which is very annoying because my apartment is hot. I live on the first floor of a two family house and it's a very old house. So new windows, which is great. So I guess they're doing their job, um, but it's very warm in here. So it's been a trying day. All right, to correct underneath the eyes, I'm gonna be using my um, Naked Skin from Urban Decay. This is the color correcting fluid in deep peach they have a darker color than this like a reddish i think actually i lied to you i think this may be the darkest color i haven't like once i know what i'm using i use it and that's it so i'm only putting this under the eye because i have dark circles thanks mom not too much just enough to um be able to cover that up and once i put foundation and Concealer, all of that will be gone. So I'm just using a Real Techniques sponge, not wet, just dry, just to make sure it's everywhere and it's not as orange as when you first put it on. I love the Real Techniques sponge because you don't need it wet to do that. I mean, you can if you want to, but that's very soft. There's others that are just, they're so tight that they're just really like scrunchy on the face. So for foundation today i am using my Too faced born this way i haven't had this foundation in quite some time and i finally decided to repurchase it and i'm happy that i did it's one of my favorite foundations it goes on the skin so beautifully it's just it's a really flawless foundation tend to just kind of dot it all over the face and then what I'll do is I'll take another makeup sponge and make sure that that's very well into the skin. And the reason why I put a little more, I, you're probably looking at me like she has a lot on, is because with the wet sponge, it's going to inevitably take some of that off. So I may actually, may need to put a little more on. Who knows? So the sponge that I'm using is the Sonia Kashuk. This is a great sponge. It just gets so big. And I love it. It is so soft, very affordable. I think for two, I paid like $8 or something like that. And I just really, really, really love it. So just remember that if you're using a corrector underneath the eyes that is orange or red, if your uh, complexion is darker, you're going to want to refrain from getting that sponge in the corrector or else you'll end up with an orange face. Yes, I speak from experience. So I'm just making sure that this blends into my ear and down my neck. And the color that I'm using is the warm beige, which really does fit my skin tone beautifully. I thought I was gonna have to lighten it with how it looked in the bottle, but that's not the case. All right, you guys know that although I don't mind using full coverage foundation, 
I don't ever cake it on, that is going to do it. I'm going to add concealer and I'm going to add powder so all of that adding on to it is going to um, make this even more full coverage. So for concealer today, I'm using my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and this color is caramel which works very well with my skin. And you guys will notice that it is darker as you get older. You want to use darker concealer. You know, if you're 21, 22, you can use that lightning, whitening stuff underneath the eyes without issue. But once you get older, you want to start using something that is close to your skin tone or just no more than like a shade lighter because it's really going to bring a lot of... Um, a lot of attention to the under eye area if you've got very, very white concealer. So I'm just taking the Real Technique sponge and I'm using the other side. Again, this is really soft to be dry, but the reason why I use this, or I've been using this recently for under the eye is just that I find that it holds more of the concealer under the eye instead of taking it off because it's a little damp. And beauty blenders or beauty sponges should never, ever, ever be sopping wet. You have to wash them or, um, you know, rinse them. And then what you want to do is, like, just wring out as much of that as you possibly can. And, um, and then just make sure that it's completely off. All right, we want to set that down because my under eyes are just, like, they love to crease unfortunately and so I'm just grabbing some banana powder from Anastasia Anastasia Beverly Hills whatever and just making sure I'm not putting too much either I find that if you put too much powder as well you're gonna look cakey and especially when you're getting older you don't want that so you just want enough to set it down and for it not to crepe or just look kind of gross you know later on as you're continuing to wear your makeup all right so what we're gonna move on to now is the under eye area so I'm going to zoom you back in because I want you to be able to see closer what I'm doing and then the eyeshadows that I'm gonna be using so I'm gonna be using a new palette new to me anyway and I'm excited about using it because I love blue eyeshadow love 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 it okay so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to start on the inner in the inner corner with the yellow and the green again because i want to bring that in a little bit and then continue on with some darker green and then finish off with a really nice blue so i'm going to take the same uh brush that i was using because it is very thin and we're going to dip back into the zulu palette and then we're going to do underneath the eye with that yellow and I like a very smoky um, bottom lash line. So even though this is not gonna necessarily be smoky, I'm gonna bring it down a ways because I really want it to look blown out. And we're gonna add some really nice shiny effects to that inner corner before it's all said and done. Once that yellow is on there, I am going to grab that Sugar Pill Green Shadow, and we're gonna do the same thing we did for the top, is to basically just make that yellow pop a little more, because it is, it's a dull yellow, and that's not saying that it's a bad yellow, but it's it's not a like a, um, a neon yellow, you know, where that's really gonna pop, and that's why I'm gonna add some glitter at the end to the inner corner to really make it stand out even more. So we're going to move on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this color which is like a teal green and then we're going to move into the blue because we already had that um, very light green almost like a it's not even a grassy green because a grassy green is going to be much darker um, but I do want to add that so that the going into the blue is just kind of gonna, again, melt into each other. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a flat definer brush from ColourPop. I wanna start with that, and then what we can do is 
then blow it out after I get it on that lash line. So for now, like I said, I'm really just getting the placement down, making sure that I'm kind of bringing it into the green just a bit, bringing it down because I do want it to be blown out, and then bringing it a little farther than what it's supposed to be because I want this to melt. And because this is a powder shadow, I'm actually going to go into this blue right here, which is almost like a, an oceany blue because it is a, not a shimmer per se, but it's just more of a vibrant color. And that I think is going to really stick down into that kind of turquoise color. So the new palette that I'm digging into is the Blue Moon from ColourPop and it is exactly what you would think it is it's a beautiful all blue palette and so i am going to be doing that blue kind of from the center all the way out and really really making that blue so so i'm going to take another flat definer brush i want to keep the there we go the um the color controlled i'm going to go into tide pool here which is sort of a shimmer that's my dog wanting to get on the bed she gets down off the bed and then she wants to get on it so as you can see it is a very 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 vibrant i'm going to pop that right onto the green and i'm going to bring it out and down again because i do want this to look very very blown out at the bottom And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to take my Morphe E36 brush, which is a very small, fluffy brush, and then I'm going to dip into Clued In, which is the darker blue, just a little bit. I don't wanna get rid of the blue that I already have on there. I just wanna deepen it a little bit. So again, that it's just it just looks a little more smoky. So I'm just doing that basically underneath that lash line. And with rainbow looks, we want the colors to, even though they're melting in, into each other, you still want them to be seen on their own. So you kind of got to walk that fine line. So I'm just going back into that turquoise color that I had gone to earlier that was a little more powdery in the Zulu palette. because we kind of want it to go that yellow, green, blue situation down there. Then I'm going to go in with that kind of shimmery blue on top of it, just to kind of lay it down. All right, and then I'm going to pick up the Morphe flat definer brush. Then I'm going to go back into Blue Moon and go into Tide Pool, which is right here. And that's a really nice stickier consistency. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna lay down a really nice foundation to put that darker blue. Now we're gonna take the E36 from Morphe, which is that small fluffy brush, get into that deep blue. And then like I did on the other side, I'm not gonna put it right at the top. What I wanna do is I wanna put it like in the middle and low so that it's a little darker, but it's not taking away from that kind of the gloss of that tide pool color. So for the inner corner of the eye, I am going to be using, where is it? So this is my MAC Reflex Glitter. This thing is so amazeballs. It is like I have some in the cap and that'll probably do me for what I need here. So what I want to do is I want to put that on the inner corner, both top and bottom in that green to really make it um, pop more. So I'm probably going to need more. I thought I had enough there, but I didn't. So I'm just going to take this cap off and I'm dipping my brush right in there and that's that. It's, it's really nice. And that's about glitter all over your face. I don't know if you're catching that with the camera. 
and I've got glitter in my eye, which I know is going to be really, really bad. But isn't glitter bad everywhere? Like it'll be in everything for the next 22 years. So I am going to tight line. I'm just using my Pat McGrath Labs pencil that you can see it's like horribly small. And again, I just always tight line. As you can see, this looks much more finished than this I hear. And so that the eye again looks finished because I don't have uh, lower lashes. So, and I'm actually gonna start looking for some to try them and see how they feel. I know sometimes people say they're a little uncomfortable, but whatever. All right, so we're gonna move on to the rest of the face. I am going to be bronzing and I am also going to be um, contouring. You guys know I don't contour from a, a lot and really most of the time, um, but today's look, I thought it, you know, it called for it. So I'm going to be using my bronze booster from Physicians Formula. It is by far for me like this gray shade right here. Oh, I just popped that too far back. Is so beautiful and ashy and I know people are like did she just say ashy yes you want a great tone all you want to do is just bring um, definition to like the cheekbone so you don't have to and you don't want to use anything that's like dark brown or reddish or anything that's not gonna look right so and I'm also gonna contour my nose I'm just going going nuts though today with this stuff all right so, so what I want to do is get this brush, which I love for contouring. This is the Juvia's J121 Angled Contour. And so I'm just dipping it into that gray color in the middle. And I'm taking off most of it. And I'm just gonna lightly contour. And you probably can see a little bit, you see like that gray edge right there? That's all you want. You just want to define the cheekbone and you want it to look great. I know that sounds so weird, but that's the way it's supposed to be. So that when I'm looking at you straight ahead, you see that you want that shadow there. And I'm just taking that kind of from the tip of my ear, the top of it, not all the way to the cheekbone and just like a line you still want it to be blended but it's not something that should be that you know like that wide just to do that for the cheekbones and i just want to make sure that they're even so that it doesn't look like one is higher than the other so to bronze, I'm going to take the darker shade there and just bronze on the sides of the forehead and down a little bit into the cheeks. Not too much. I like to bronze just enough that you could see it, but not enough to, you know. Just basically to warm up the skin, that's all. For blush, I'm gonna be using my the Saharan Blush Volume 2, also from Juvia's Place. The color that I love from this is called B. It's just, I, I really do like the way that looks on my skin, um, on my skin tone, so that's the one that I tend to use. So I am gonna grab my Morphe E4, which is this brush right here. I'm gonna lightly blush up. <laughs> so this glitter might have been a big mistake. I'm not sure yet. I mean, once I have my lashes and everything on and lipstick, we'll see. We shall see. So for highlighter, I decided to go with an actual color, not just highlighter. So I'm using my Mega Glow from Wet n Wild. This one... Uh, the color's always, oh, it's called Royal Calyx, so it's got a little bit of a purple shift there, which is really, really nice. Yeah. And I definitely wanted something that was going to bring color to the cheeks. And I'm hoping that you're picking that up. If we're going to do a pride look, we're going to do a pride look. I want color everywhere. Let 
let's go ahead and do lashes. I'm definitely doing that off camera. They always take forever. And if you guys watch my video, you know how it is. But it's going to literally be a split second from the time I leave this to the time I come back. So let me go do that and we'll finish up. So I have my lashes on and they are beautiful. This is actually the first time that I've used these. I've had these probably, wow, well over, probably almost two years. These are the Velour Mink Lashes in Take It and Go. They also have changed their packaging in that, in that time before. I forget how they used to have it, but now they come in these really nice clear um, cases. The reason why I like these is because the outer portion of it is very cat I like so I like the way it kind of comes out a little more fluttery on the corners and then I just kind of zhuzhed up my hair a bit and now we are going to finish off with lips I was thinking that I was going to do a really colorful lip um, but I did that the last time that I put together a pride look so I wanted something a little more subdued but still with some color not just a nude so I'm going to be using a purple um, mashup of stuff First, to line the lips, I'm going to be using my uh, Gerard Cosmetics lip liner in Cher, which is a beautiful, kind of everyday movie nude, but I just want that base set down, so that's what we're going to start with. So the lipstick that I'm going to be using is from the line Nuance from Salma Hayek. I have had this for a while, but I absolutely love it. It is called Mystic, Mystical Mauve, and then they have a matching lip gloss, which I'm going to put on top of this lipstick to make sure that everything looks shiny and really healthy. So the lip gloss is also from Nuance, and that looks like this. That color is Toasted Honey. So I just put just a little bit of this. Just to add a little more shine. So that is going to do it for this pride inspired makeup look. I hope it is a video you enjoyed. I definitely enjoyed putting the look together for you. I think it came out really great at the beginning, like always, right? Like that black smoky, I always say it looks a little iffy, but then once everything comes together, it just looks so much better. And this is the same thing in this case. I think everything came together really beautifully in showcasing just um, the rainbow colors and celebrating pride month. Pride, though, is not just one month. Always remember that Pride is every single day of every single week, every single month, all year long. It is not just one month. I am going to leave some links for organizations and associations down below um, if you need to reach out for any help or any um, type of advice or that sort of thing. I know coming out is not always the easiest thing in the world. and. Sometimes it can be made harder if you don't have a very strong support system. So I do hope that even if, let's say, family doesn't accept it, that you have a very strong um, group of friends or family members, they don't have to necessarily be by blood, to help you get through things. You are worth something. You are amazing. You are important. So don't ever, ever, ever forget that. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.